Okie doke. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so, so much for, for giving up a, a chunk of your Thursday afternoon in November. I know that in November, it is one of those times that um, the, the juice is starting to run out a little bit. But I guess that's why we've gone for this topic in November. Uh, it's a little bit about, you know, about how teachers can, you know, feel like they're in control of their day, feel like they're the ones that are the, the masters of the way the clock's ticking. And, um, and while I would love to provide you with lots of information and expertise around that, when I had a really good think about it, I reckon I'm one of the people that would be better seated as a participant in this webinar. So that's why we have Amy Green online today. So I just want to check here. Amy, can you hear me loud and clear there? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you so much, Amy, for coming along and, um, and providing some really genuine value to the real schools community. Look, I, I probably, you know, I was really fascinated by your work when I first discovered it. And I think that there were a couple of reasons for it. One is that the, the advice you're providing, Amy, is so practical. It's stuff that people can do straight away and that people can have genuine you know, benefit from quickly. I think probably, you know, two also for me is that you're a current practitioner. You're somebody who's at the coal face and is having to deal with the, that November fatigue <laughs> that can sometimes yeah, creep probably. across it. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I just thought you were so perfectly placed to make a difference today. And I think, Amy, probably the one thing that when I looked at your work, I, I saw the video that you put up there about camp. Do you remember putting that one there? Um, yes, about going to camp and, and going what we do. Yeah. 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 And the effort and the, the above and beyond that, that teachers will do. Yeah. And, and I just thought about that video and thought, gee, you know, that's, it's a, such a 24-7 commitment that almost no other industry requires of their people. And um, so I thought that was a really powerful vid. So um, I reckon you're perfect for this one, Amy. So we're really looking forward to you getting cracking today. Um, I'll, I'll just begin really briefly today by um, making sure also that everybody who is online understands that you're a part of the webinar today. So if you do want to contribute to the webinar, we'd really love your participation. I know Amy's got a couple of polls that she's going to run and she's going to ask several questions of you as we go. Um, but know that there's a couple of ways that you can interact and, and at a, in a way that works for you. So I know that it's a determination of Amy's as well is to... Um, and make sure that we contextualise this in reality. So if you, if you do have a question today, you'll see either a question box or a chat box in your control panel, depending on which version of the GoToWebinar software you're accessing. And just feel free to pop something in there um, and we'll get to that as we, as we move along the webinar. And then the other one thing, the way that you can contribute is that we're just like a regular classroom in some ways. You'll see on your control panel the little hand up facility as well. And so that's just like a classroom. What we have is the, the opportunity Opportunity to be able to unmute you if you happen to have be at a laptop or if you've got a headset on and um, if you've got a question that you're happy to ask verbally in front of the group then I know that it'll be a value to the group so you know feel free to put your hand up and we're going to try and get to you in a really timely way also so I reckon that's probably enough of me being a flight attendant Amy so I'm going to attempt the technological breakthrough no, of making too. you a <laughs> presenter <laughs> okay. So first of all, I'll drift over to you and just check that that's working for you. Okay, yeah, I can see showing my screen. So yeah, that's I'll, the way to do it. I click that. And then if I put my Real's power on. Going on here. Oh, this is working neatly. And then what I'm going to do is mute myself and get out of the way so you can put on a great show for these people, Amy. Uh, Thank you it, so much for being Yeah, you can see you're in business. We're in business. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for that lovely introduction. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you all for being here and giving up your Thursday afternoon. I know exactly how you feel right now. I know you feel tired. I know that you're counting down the last few weeks or maybe you're even counting down in days now. Um, I know that reports need to be written and assessments need to be done. I know that some of you are feeling anxious about where you're going to work next year. Maybe some of you already got positions and you're thinking how are you going to move and transition um, or you don't know what year you'll be teaching. Those ex end of year excitements that we feel because we're wrapping something up but then 
the pressure and the anxiety or maybe even the excitement again of knowing or not knowing what's happening next year and it really is a an exhausting tiring time there is a part of me that thinks Maybe I should uh, also be on the other end of my own webinar because it's really, really tough. But one of the reasons that I've ended up here doing this and establishing green and growing education is because as a teacher who is in it day after day after day, I really empathise with my colleagues because I know how much extra pressure is put on us and the different things that we have to do and face and tackle and um, like Adam said I addressed that in some of my videos but often it's an expectation and it's done without thinking about the impact it has on not only our classroom and our students and our teaching but also our own health and well-being and our mental state so um, part of what I am really really passionate about is working with teachers on their own health and well-being and yes, that means having to look at classroom practices and, and different things and how we manage ourselves at school, but it's really about who are we as a person first. So I have taught here in Australia, over in London, I've taught from preschool to year 10, um, and I have uh, just over 10 years experience. So, you know, as far as schools go, I've been in nearly every classroom and in every different possible setting you can think of. But one thing remains the same. Um, and one thing that I see often is that our teachers are tired or overwhelmed, burn out, but that doesn't take away their passion. But no matter what question I ask teachers about what it is that they need to be able to grow or move forward or tick more things on their to-do list, the one answer I always get is, I need more time. And what I find interesting about that is that it doesn't matter what we say or, or do, we never feel like we have enough time. So we know, when, I have actually been on a um, Facebook post um, comment feed over the last few days that I'm in about teachers wanting to exercise and some of them are saying there's no way that they can even think about going to the gym after the school because their brain just feels like mush. And I found this um, image here from, uh, from the teacher talk and it's so true. How often do you go to bed at night time and you are just running off things that you have to do the next day or during the week or stuff that you should have done before, you go, um, before you've gotten into bed or how often do you actually get up out of bed just to do that one last task or to put that book in your bag so you don't forget it or to write that on your list because you know you haven't done it the last two days and it really needs to happen. And we have these roundabout thoughts that keep us going all the time which makes it really hard for us to switch off. And then we wonder why we can't sleep because our brain is just constantly moving. And part of having more time is actually giving yourself time to do nothing. And I know that doesn't really um, sound like it works but we're going to tap more into that about how um, spending more time on something can give you more time somewhere else. So part of today is about you really participating. I'm a believer in if you're just going to sit and listen then you know what's the point? The same as we would with our students in our classroom. Ask questions, comment, um, jump on and say something if you want to. This is about your learning and about you being able to take some practical strategies back with you so that you know how to manage time better and ultimately what we want is for everyone to have more time for themselves. So when I talk to people about time whilst we want more time to be able to do our planning or mark our books or give feedback or meet with parents, all of that school stuff, I'm really driven by looking at the whole picture and the whole teacher and I am really concerned for our teachers and how we are as people which means we need more time for ourselves. and for some of us especially those who are married to the job and and it is our only identity it's a really hard concept to grasp and then I'll talk a little bit about this as well but one question I often ask people that they stumble to answer is if I had more time 
what would I do with it? So I just want you to have that in the back of your mind as we go today. So before I get into the nitty gritty, I'm really curious to know who is with us um, so that I can tailor what I've got to really suit your needs. So I'm just going to put up a, a poll here asking, are you a teacher, a teaching assistant, school leader, principal or other? Um, so you should be able to see that. So I can see the responses coming in now. That's awesome. So being a teacher um, is really important for all of our students, but they are the ones that seem to feel like they, I guess, struggle with time the most. It's great to see school leaders and principals in here as well um, so that we can all have the same message and that we can take that back to our colleagues also. Really, really important. So I'm just going to close that poll now and the last one I have for you now there's a typo in this I'll tell you a funny story about spelling while I um while you while you um put your results in so I am here because you know I want to improve my time management what better work-life balance never seem to have enough time you want to learn for yourself or you want to learn so you can help someone else um recently I had some feedback about one of my Facebook posts on a group I have called busy teachers who love teaching and it was from another uh, fellow lady who is also working in the teacher education space and she wanted to give me feedback. There was a typo in something and she wanted to let me know because she has received some criticism lately of her own work because um, people were um, trying to correct her, her spelling and things for her. And my response to her, as grateful as I was that she'd given me feedback about spelling, was that if all people are doing is looking at the spelling, then they're missing the point. <laughs> and I think sometimes as teachers, we get so hung up on spelling errors because it's so obvious and so in our face, we miss the actual point of what we're teaching or learning or the message. I mean, sure, spelling is important, but um, we're all educators and we know how to spell. Mistakes happen and we're people too. And I just thought that was very interesting that there are definitely people out there that get hung up on spelling. Um, so if there was a spelling error on one of my Facebook posts, I didn't bother to go back and change it because my message is, you know, teachers are people too and we make mistakes. That's okay. We're not perfect. Excellent. So it seems most of us are here to improve time management and I have some strategies coming for you for that as well as some work-life balance stuff. Fantastic. I'll just close those and keep going. Hopefully it keeps working. Let's check that that's all going good. All right, so I'm going to keep going and hopefully the screen changes and we're not frozen. All right, we're all seeing the same clock I am, I hope. So time is a really interesting topic, I think, when we start to unpack it with our teachers or our colleagues and philosophers, people who study time. You could get quite philosophical. Um, you know, does time exist? Is time real? The fact is, for some reason, it's here and we all have to adhere to it and it really does dictate how we spend our time and how we spend our day. But one of the things that I uh, find really interesting, I guess almost a quote that I have from time, is that time is going to happen regardless of what we're doing, but do you run the day or does the day run you? You know those people you meet um, and they're like rushing around, they've got so many things going on, they're like running from this thing to that thing, they're ticking things off their list, they're doing one activity but then they're talking about what they need to do after that and that and that. It's almost exhausting just having a conversation with them. Those people are being run by their day. They are always chasing time. They are always 
moving from one thing to the next without actually being present in any moment. And then on the other side, you can meet someone who um, may have the same job as the other person, a similar kind of life, yet they're very relaxed, they're very chilled, they're, they're still effective and efficient and do everything that needs to be ha um, to, to happen, but, you know, they're moving from one task to the next. They're almost floating through life like nothing bothers them, yet everything seems to be working for them. So those people are running their own day. To have better time management and to get a better grasp on how our day goes, we need to start thinking about how do I run my day rather than let my day run me. There's an element of control in this. So do you control what happens in your day or does your day control how you spend the day? Because either way, the day happens, the time happens, the weeks go past, but if you don't have control of how you're spending that, doing that, the activities and things that you're doing, then you know you get to the end of the day and you're like, oh, my God, what happened? I don't even know what I achieved today. I don't know where the day went. I didn't get anything done. And that's a sign that really the day is running you. So we all have the same amount of time in a day. It's just how we spend it that counts. I was listening to some conversations at school over the last week or so and I was really listening in to time conversations knowing that this was coming up. There was a conversation between two colleagues. One of our um, executive staff had to deal with a student and straight away she said, well, I don't have time to do it. It's report writing time. So yesterday I was packing up to go home and someone had said, why aren't you writing your reports? And I said, well, I already finished them. And they said, but how do you have time to do that? Um, and then I, I was doing an observation on a teacher this week and we were talking about how we can utilise our time in the classroom to ask more questions, to unpack and um, the learning that our students are doing and the, and the deep understanding that we hope they're getting, but if we don't ask questions, then all we're doing is assuming, so we don't really know. So asking more questions for that, and the response from that was, but I don't have time to ask questions. So it's really interesting that, you know, a couple of conversations I overheard, the instant reaction was, I don't have time. But, you know, Richard Branson has time to run 50 companies in a day and Bill Gates did whatever he did with his day and time and Beyonce does what she does with hers. But we all have the same amount of time as Bill Gates or Richard Branson or Beyonce or whoever it is. It's just how we spend it that counts. So one of the things that helped me flip my perception of time was someone said to me, if time was money, would you spend it the same way? We're very um, cautious on how we spend our money. Well, assumption and generalisation, not everyone. But, you know, some people are very cautious about how they spend their money. They know what it's going, uh, where it's going. And when they exchange money in return, they want something back, be it an item, a good, an, a good an experience, um, food, a holiday, we exchange money and we expect something in return. But we don't think of time the same way. We don't think, but if I spend time, I should get something back. What happens is we just go through time without really thinking about how we're spending it. So if you had to pay a dollar for every minute, would you spend it the same way? We spend money because we want something in return, so how do we spend our time? Now, time can really take over us, but it can also lay still for a while. So we all know at times, <laughs> at times, time, we all know at times that we get to a point where we literally explode. So like a volcano, we seem to be doing all right. Nothing's really going on and things start to build up, we might have more 
tasks to do, more responsibility, whatever that might be. And then all of a sudden we can't take it anymore and we start to feel really overwhelmed and we can't cope and so we explode. Because the little things after a while turn into a big thing and eventually it has to erupt. So we get to a point where we're stressed, we're feeling unwell, we don't know how to cope. Just like lava keeps coming out, the list keeps getting bigger and we don't know how to make it stop. But what we also don't realise is that by not having a hold on our time management and not having strategies in place, the lava that's running out, so all of that chaos, is impacting people around us far more than we imagine. Because if we don't have a hold of our time, we impact not only our students because we're not able to plan as well, mark as well, we'll give feedback as well. We also impact our colleagues because we're not able to be the best teacher to be able to support them or work alongside them as we can be. We also impact our friends and family because we don't have time to spend with them, to have the relationships or to do anything with them, and we impact ourselves. So just like a volcano can explode and impact everything around it, so can us if we don't have the right time management strategies. And what we don't want to happen is for us to get to the point where we feel like I can't take it anymore, I wish I could just quit my job. Now I'm just going to take a minute to check my questions and things. So while I do that, just check in with yourself. How are you on the volcano scale? Are you lying still? Are you exploding already? So, Anne, I see you've got your hand up there. I can just unmute you if you like, if you want to ask a question or something. Are you there, Anne? Okay, I can't hear you, so I'll put you back on mute, but maybe try and type something in the comment box that might help, or in the question box, sorry. Hmm. Okay, let's check questions. All right, we'll keep going. Sorry, Anne, I'm not quite sure. Oh, yeah, question. Here we go. Oh, she was just saying hi. Isn't that lovely? Hi, Anne. It's great to have you. Okay, so why don't I have any time? There are so many things that teachers do and I want you to know that this is from my observation and it's an absolute generalisation and in no way am I uh, representing anyone in particular or making any judgments or anything like that, but it's simply just a brainstorm of things that I've observed in my, in my teaching experience. So... Why don't I have any time? Teachers are great procrastinators. We love to look busy, but busy doesn't always mean working or being productive. Um, you don't prioritise your time. So whilst we've got all these things to do, sometimes it's much easier and less demanding to sharpen pencils and organise our pencil pots to make sure there's one of each colour in a jar than it is to actually write our reports. I know that that happens because I've seen it. We spend too much time in the staff room. Yes, our colleagues are very precious to us and the relationships we have with them are what can make us get through the day. I totally get that. There are some times where I've thought if it wasn't for my colleagues, I don't know if I'd make it. But that doesn't mean we have to have a one-hour lunch break with them every day or 45 minutes before school starts. Yet, we do this sometimes. We spend too much time looking for resources. One of the best um, pieces of advice I was giving early on, given earlier on was either make it yourself or stick to a couple of websites and if it's not there, make it. 
Because how often do we get stuck on Google going over and over and over, searching the same thing in different ways, and we still haven't found it. In fact, I saw a funny quote the other day. It says, it said, you know you're desperate if you click to page two of the Google search. And I thought, so true. <laughs> so if you're getting past page one and you haven't found it, make it yourself. There's no collaboration or very little collaboration. And this goes with the work harder, not smarter thing. Um, your colleagues are awesome people, so use them. It, you don't have to do everything yourself. Part of having more time is going to be your ability to be able to let some stuff go. And as teachers who always want the best, who are perfectionists, who like it done their way, that's a really hard thing to do. I know because I was a super perfectionist driven by control. Learning to let go is one of the best things that I have done in order to help me manage my time and have better time management and work-life balance. So if you're one of those people, let's let, let go a little bit. Uh, lack of systems and structures. So we're doing stuff, but we don't really have any systems or structures, processes in place to make sure that it's consistent. So I'm gonna, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, we have too many lists that remain unticked. So, so many different lists floating around, like where is that list that I wrote that on? And oh, how long has that list been there? I still haven't done any of those tasks. I'm sure that some of those resonate with you. We overcomplicate things. So, um, you know, it's really easy to get hung up on small, minute details, but we have to get better at looking at the big picture. It doesn't really matter. Can I let it go? Um, not everything has to be perfect. Not everything has to be solved straight away. We're not thinking about the learning. So as teachers, we can be really activities driven. Um, we can get hung up on what the students are going to do or produce when in, in fact, we started to think about well, what learning needs to take place. It can actually really reduce the amount of time you will spend on creating resources or finding activities. Um, so part of my role is to work with teachers on how they are planning and being in classrooms and looking at the learning that's happening because our role really is to get students to learn, not to get them to do pretty activities. So by flipping your thinking to what learning needs to happen rather than what do I need to teach, can also really help you to have more time to assess and be able to make sure that learning is taking place. Google takes over. I've talked about this before. Google, as great as it is, can be an awesome procrastinator tool, a distraction. It can provide you with paths that you didn't even know were there or existed and you have so much fun and then you're like, oh my God, an hour's passed and I haven't done anything. Be mindful of Google. Uh, we like to multitask, so, you know, it's like do one thing well, not ten things poorly. I'll say no more about that. Time management obviously comes into it. We overcommit and underperform. Teachers love to say yes. They just love to be at the front, to get everything done. We don't want to let anyone down. So we commit to everything but then we don't really do anything that well. Or we do one thing really well and other things drop off. We lose sight of what is number one and it is teaching and learning. Now I know there are so many things that come into our day, but teaching and learning is cool. Teaching and learning is what needs to be at the forefront of your mind all the time as a teacher. And if you're a leader, we want our teachers to be thinking about teaching and learning. That is what they're there for. And believe it or not, some teachers are actually afraid of finishing the job, afraid of getting stuff done because once they're finished, now what? So a lot of teachers have their identity trapped in being a teacher. They don't know who they are, where they are or what to do without teaching. Now for me, that's really scary because I actually think if I was to win the lotto and retire, I could fill my day with hobbies very easily. But I'm sure you all know those teachers who don't want to retire because they don't know what they're going to do with their time. 
And yet here we are saying, I want more time. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? So what's really going on? Whilst we see all of these behaviours and these things happening that people are doing, it's not actually the real problem. The real problem isn't that we procrastinate. The real problem isn't that we don't have enough time. The real problem isn't that we take an hour for lunch in the staff room each day or have coffees from quarter past eight. That's not the real problem. The real problem are rules. You might know them as beliefs. Now, in a classroom, it's really easy. We have rules. They're black and white, there's no grey areas, we stick to them, our students know what they are, and we hold our students to account. It's pretty explicit. So there was no can I or can't I wear my dress above my knee? The answer is no. It has to be above the ankle. So there's no grey area in that. Teachers knew what was expected of them. But now we kind of need some new rules because the rules that we have are almost taboo or secret rules. They're like the unwritten rules of teachers. So how often, um, or just think about a time when you've started a new school and where I work, the, the mandated hours are 8.30 to 4.51. Now, we know as teachers we don't work 8.30 to 4.51. Uh, we kind of go with what happens. So I'm starting in a new role next year at a new school and I was saying to my partner this week, oh, I wonder what time I'll have to start work next year um, because at my current school it's acceptable for me to get there at about quarter past eight. Um, but at my new school, I don't know, I've worked in schools before where even though your mandated starting hour was 8.30, you know, everyone got there by 8 o'clock and if you got there after 8 o'clock, people were like, oh, she must be a bit lazy. So there are these unwritten rules that we have as teachers and in schools and they even set our culture in a school environment. We need to be really careful about what message are we sending out about who we are as a school and who are we as a person. So... Beliefs are things that we have either been taught as a child, we take to, into adulthood, or that we've been taught maybe at uni or in our first year of teaching. And I don't mean explicitly taught like in a classroom. It's something we picked up along the way. And so it's a, it's a rule that you would have for yourself. Um, but as teachers, we have these unwritten beliefs and they're kind of like the things that fuel the gossip. They're the things that... You wouldn't really say to someone's face, but you'd say behind their back. Um, so, you know, how many times do you hear pe people say or think to themselves, if I'm not busy, I'm not working hard enough? So the idea of even having a break is completely unreasonable because if I'm not busy, I'm not working hard enough and I'm a hard worker. The teacher who arrives earliest and leaves the last is, and leaves last is the best teacher. I love this one. It's always been this way, so it stays this way. That's the way it is, just the way we've always done it. Resources make the lesson. So if you don't have the right resources and your kids aren't doing like a pretty activity, then you haven't done the right thing. And that's that shift. It's not about resources, it's about learning. But still, we have teachers or even school leaders that walk around and they're like, oh, could have done with a better resource there. It's not about the resource. Teachers are supposed to be busy. I hear this often. I have a few new educators I'm working with and other teachers will say to them, 
stop complaining, you're a teacher, you're supposed to be busy. It's not a thing. It doesn't have to be a thing. Um, if I'm not working, I don't care enough. You know, the guilt of not doing work on a Sunday night or um, not staying late because your colleagues are up, it doesn't mean you don't care. The idea that it has to be perfect. Yes. I think about this, I've worked with a teacher once, actually I worked with a school leader who did the same thing, and all of the displays had to be hung um, either vertically or horizontally and at right angles, and she would get the leveller out to measure them and to make sure that they were straight and that the distance between each piece of paper and the display was even, and they also had to be double mounted. And if it wasn't, this school leader was known to take your displays down and then when you came back the next morning, that was her way of saying, put it up straight. <sighs> Things don't have to be perfect. Um, I must say yes to everything. No, nope. no you don't. I can never say no. We know these teachers, they can't say no to anything and then what happens is people start asking them to do stuff, like all the time. Are you or does someone or do you know one of those teachers who just says yes to everything? And so other people take advantage of that. And teachers don't have work-life balance. I love this. So being that this is my main driver of um, what I'm trying to help teachers achieve, I have definitely been exposed to comments and beliefs from other teachers which say, you, what are you doing trying to get teachers to have work-life balance? It's not a thing. Teachers don't have that. Now, these are just some that I came up with off the top of my head and I'm sure that there are many, many more. So I'm just going to have a drink of water. If you know of anything else that's going on for you or you, you want to share something or a comment, feel free to type it in now. I'm just going to have a drink of my water. All right, we'll keep going. So Zig Ziglar, you can change what you are and where you are by changing what goes into your mind. So the beautiful thing about these beliefs is they're not real. We've just made them up, which means we can change them. Super, super powerful stuff. So Tony Robbins was a leader um, in the beliefs and values space says, beliefs have the power to create and the power to destroy. I'll let you read the rest of that. So what we want to have, have is beliefs that empower us as educators, beliefs that allow us to be awesome teachers and awesome humans. Beliefs that support us to be who we are. So we need to create a new path that's going to lead us into having new beliefs because as soon as we harness these new beliefs, we start to see time and the things that we do in a different way. So again, these are some beliefs that I, not that I made up, that I actually believe for me. So these are my own beliefs and these are things that I have, um, I guess, created over time because I needed to start using some language that would work for me and support me in the decisions that I made and it's really helped to shape how I spend my day. And this is something I openly talk about with my colleagues and the teachers that I coach um, and, and my school leaders, even my, my principal and other, my other bosses. Um, it's very important to know what your beliefs are and to be 100% okay with them because these are the unwritten rules of your life. Now, we have beliefs about everything in all different areas, no matter what, but being a teacher, it's really important to have ones that work for you and support you. Um, so, you know, I, I tell myself, if my students are learning, I've done enough. That is my one goal, to get my students to learn. Time doesn't equal quality. Quantity doesn't equal quality. We know there are teachers that can be at school from seven to seven. That doesn't mean that they are the best teachers. We know that. 
We know that for me, it's okay to say no. Not everything has to be perfect. And sometimes near enough is good enough. So if my display is a little bit crooked, I'm okay with that now. It's okay to arrive last and leave first sometimes. Resources don't make the lesson, great teaching does. I'm open to change. New things keep me motivated. Work-life balance is a must and weekends are for weekend things. They're my beliefs for me. So they may or may not work for you, but I encourage you to think about what your beliefs are and are they working for you and do you need to change them to be more empowering and 100% feel free to steal mine. That's what they're there for. So once you've got some new beliefs, it's not like I look at these and go, my life's perfect now. Yay, I've got all this free time. You have to take some action. And this is where it can get difficult because you have to put those things into play. So here comes the doing stuff. So if you're wondering what you're actually going to be able to take away and apply right now, this is it. So we need to get organised, but I'm not talking about your classroom or your desks or your pencil bots or whatever. I'm talking about you and how you are and how you spend your time. So one of the strategies that I've used to help organise my time is a bit of a time audit. And I've done this with um, other teachers as well and different clients that I've, that I've coached. So often when you hear people say, oh, I have no time, um, and then you break the day down into 30-minute intervals, all of a sudden you're like, oh, my God, I have all of this time and I didn't even know it existed. I didn't even know what I was doing with it. Exercise is a perfect example. So people will say I don't have time to exercise. Um, so part of being a, a coach in the education and teacher space isn't just looking at classroom practice. It's also, for me, about health and wellbeing. So often I will work with teachers on making sure that they're doing things to stay healthy. We know healthy teachers have better um, attendance in schools and we know that if teachers are taking time off, that it impacts student learning. That's, that's the goal. So I don't have time to exercise is common. Yet when I have done this with other um, teachers, you know, we might find that they are getting up at 7 or 6 o'clock, but they're not getting to work till 8.30. So there's an hour and a half in the morning there I'm not sure what people are doing with. Or they might watch two hours of TV at night. No one needs to watch two hours of TV at night. Um, so if you really want to exercise, there's time there. We find time for the things we really want to do. And if there's things we say we want to do when we don't do them and there's genuinely not time, then that's cool. But if there's time and you're not doing it and you're using it as an excuse, time is not an excuse. So I would highly recommend you do an activity like that. You can um, see this is exactly what mine looks like. And you can see the detail I went to to block out different chunks of time within my day. Now, actually, I should change it because I feel like working full time and doing this, I am doing some um, work for business work on a Sunday, but that's cool now. Um, but you can see I've got gym time in there, the admin for school stuff, meeting times, teaching time, planning time. I even put my lunch in. Um, and then light green is my coaching biz stuff, which I'm actually doing at 6 a.m. as well now. And then the black is time for me. So, um, I've also got some blank time so I can be a bit flexible or move things around if I have to. But if you're struggling to know where your time is and what you what you do with it, this is an activity. I've actually done this with a whole staff too. It's a really cool activity to do at the start of the year to get people to see where their, where their time is going. You can take this even further by going, Monday is my planning day for English, Tuesday is my planning day for maths, Wednesday is my planning day for other subjects. On a Friday in my release time, I photocopy all my resources, I get them ready, I make sure that I'm on top of all of everything. Um, so you can get really specific with your plan. Have a to-do list and have one to-do list. So have a list of everything that you need to do and then prioritise it. So things that have to happen now, so today, things that can maybe wait until later in the week and tick them off as you go. So the brain actually loves ticking stuff off because it feels like it's achieved something and it makes you feel good, actually releases endorphins. So tick, 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 tick. 
In fact, write things down that you've already done. Ooh, I'll go back. Write things down that you've already done and tick them off anyway, just so you can feel good. But have a list. Don't try and remember everything. You don't have to. It puts more pressure on you and prioritise it. Not everything has to be done now and some things can wait. Say no. Now, I know for some people this is difficult. Say no to some things. It doesn't mean you don't care. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you can't do that. It just means that you're prioritising where you spend your time. You don't need to be the person who does everything, especially if it's, you know, I've worked with people who don't say no because they don't feel like someone else will do the job or because they they mightn't trust someone or they say no because it's easy to do it themselves. Let go a little, don't have so much control and say no. So if you're someone that says yes to everything, just try and say no to like one thing every couple of days and see how it feels. It will feel funny at first. But get better at saying no, get better at delegating as well. Collaboration comes into this. So maybe sometimes it's not a flat out no, it's a I'm not doing all of it, we can do it together. Or let's plan it together and then you can take the rest of it on. Or you start it and then I'll come in once you get going. But a flat out yes to everything isn't going to help you have more time. All right. So for last, I've saved for you my secret rules and my top five. So top five, if you're going to do anything to start with, this would be it. Make a list, prioritise it. Build in the routine using that timetable schedule of where your time goes and stick to it. And I mean stick to it. No, sorry, I can't have that meeting at 4 o'clock on a Monday because it's my planning time. Have weekly must-dos and schedule in everything. Lunch breaks, the time it takes to drive somewhere. When you want to have a cup of tea, schedule it all in. This is all about you running your day. And my secret rules. So these are some rules that I put in place for me to make sure that I, this is where you, maybe you have to, just like they say, spend money to make money. It's like you have to spend time to make time. So never leave the night before without having the next day organised to run itself. So today's Thursday. I wouldn't leave on a Thursday unless I have everything ready for Friday. So that means all my resources are made, ready, cut, whatever. All my sheets are photocopied ready to go, anything else I need, it's there. Give as much feedback in class as you can. So on the spot feedback, um, using a marking guide where you can say I gave verbal feedback is really awesome. Use Google Classrooms if you need to to give instant feedback. Walk around with post-it notes so kids can stick it instantly in their book. Um, spending hours marking things, unless your students are going to engage with that, is useless. Plan a week in ahead, including all your printing and photocopying for the next week. So on a Friday, I would make sure that everything is organised for the next week and I photocopy and get things ready as much as I can. Now, sometimes I wouldn't photocopy stuff because I would want to wait and see how the learning went so I could assess that in case I needed to tweak things. But generally, if I can have it printed, if I can have things photocopied, if I can have things made, I would do that. I would line it all up, you know, Monday through Friday in a folder or whatever. So... My week is actually spent preparing for the following week, not chasing my tail as I'm teaching. Um, use theme days. I already mentioned Monday, Maths, Tuesday, English, that kind of thing. Work is for work and never take work home ever. So I know for some people that's really hard to hear. Um, don't have your work emails. I don't have my work emails at, at home. I don't have them on my phone. I don't have them on my iPad. I don't have them on my personal computer. Um, work is work and home is home. Now, obviously that took a little while to embed, so I had to put all of these systems and strategies in place and the structure so that I could do that. But to have more time, you need to give more time at work and have more time for you. And so that wraps 
me up there with everything. Uh, my contact details there are on the screen. If you want to shoot me any questions or emails or whatever, you can find me on Facebook as well. Um, I also have another Facebook group that's just new called Busy Teachers Who Love Teaching. Um, but I hope today that what you realise is that it's not so much about the mechanics of time. It's about the mindset and the beliefs and the things we tell ourselves about how we spend our time. I'd be really curious to know any thoughts or feedback or questions you have to wrap this up. And the PDF slides are available for you as well, so please make sure you take a copy of those. Um, and if you need anything in the future, do shout out. Uh, I'm available. So whilst I work as a teacher, um, I also work as a learning coach in my current role, and that is something that I do outside of school as well. So I work with teachers whom are looking for a bit more support either in um, how they're feeling, if they're feeling stressed or tired or they want better classroom management strategies or they want to have more time. Um, that's something that I work with teachers on as well. So my details are there and I hope that you've got at least one takeaway. So before you all go today, can you just comment your, your one biggest learning that um, you've gotten from today? And maybe if there's anything else you'd like to know more about, that would be really awesome too. But I'd like to thank you all for coming and Adam and the Real Schools team for inviting me along. It's been great. Well, Amy, thanks so much. I really appreciate having you here. I know that I, I've been sitting here, you know, jotting little things down. You're talking about, like, what's your, your key learning? And I think when you brought up those, um, those tiles near the start of your presentation about what's, the, what's going on here, what's the real problem here, why don't I have time? And that one that came up about don't I don't prioritise my time is that really resonated with me as something that I don't actually sit there and I don't treat my time sometimes as though it's precious enough. Yeah. As though it is that commodity that I really need to look after. And and I think part of it is because that thing that you said about, you know, provided I'm using it, it's okay. And that's probably not the way I should look at it. And I think that, you know, when you it challenges us today to look at our beliefs first and see how our beliefs are driving our behaviour. I talk a lot to that when we're talking about even student behaviour, that, you know, and, you know, I mean, even you know, in adult behaviour, none of us woke up accidentally on a diet this morning. You've got to think about it first, you know, and so it's about how you, you know, what are, how can we change the way that we think in order to change the way that we behave? And I love the way that your stuff, you know, is, um, is all about how, you know, that, that message came through so strongly from you about, Time's not the measure of dedication. You know, yeah. the, the the longer you work doesn't mean you're the bet that doesn't make you a better teacher, and therefore you're able to so uh, authentically show us even your own time board that you've built to make sure that that's ref that belief is reflected in the way that you live. So that's just remarkable and wonderful for me. So yeah, thank you, Amy. I thought that was I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Just seeing there are a couple of questions there, Amy, of all people that have made comment. I like what Rosie's written there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, practice saying no and scheduling. Yeah, gee, that's a big one, isn't it? When you said there that yeah. teachers are so inclined to say yes to everything. And then, yeah, the most common metaphor that I hear from teachers is that being a teacher these days is like spinning plates. And, you know, you just feel like you've got to give a little bit of attention to so, so many things, but you never go, you never actually stay and focus on one. So mm -hmm. learning to say no allows you to have less plates to spin, I suppose, which is really, really important. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I love that um, someone else has got here, you know, and said timetable everything. It really is crucial because unless we know what we're doing with our time, like I said at the beginning, you know, the day will run you and you don't know where your time has gone. Um, yeah. It's so important Spot to think about how you're spending it. You know, if you had to pay for it, would you still do it? Yeah, that's a really great way to think about it. All right, Amy, we'll let you off the hook. Thank you again so much. And um, I want to encourage everyone in the Real Schools community, go and check out Amy's work at Green and Growing Education and also follow them on Facebook. There's, um, there's some really valuable stuff there for you and November's no better time to have a look at it. So thanks again, Amy. No, thank you. Appreciate it.
All right, guys, have a wonderful uh, end of the year. Uh, we, we're actually not going to run a, a webinar in November. Why on earth would we compete with your Christmas party? Um, <laughs> but all of, our, all of our Real Schools webinars are going to be back up and running again in January. There'll be one in January when you're on holidays and you perhaps can watch it with a glass of champagne with your toes uh, dug into some nice warm sand on the beach somewhere. Uh, we'll be back in January and running all the way through next year. So thanks, everyone. Have a fabulous rest of the week and um, enjoy whatever the end of the year is for you, whether it's Christmas or any other way that you actually happen to spend the end of the year. And uh, we'll find you rocking into 2000 and 2018. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone.